Good morning to everyone on this call. This presentation is about supply allocations in NetSuite. My name is Pat Bagirthan, Senior Manufacturing Consultant in NetSuite, and I'll be walking you through all the features and functionality of supply allocations. So let me go over a brief agenda. What we're going over is supply allocations, setup requirements, how do we use the supply required by date on demand lines? How do we use the supply allocation calculations, the allocation strategies, and a brief demo? So first and foremost, what is a supply allocation? This is nothing but expanding inventory commitment calculations to consider future inventory and supply orders in addition to current on-hand inventory. So you're matching your supply sources to demand sources. It could be planned orders, planned inventory orders uh, with their supply required by dates. It could be um, matching of demand orders with future ship dates to supply orders with receipt dates. On-hand inventory remains available to meet demand. So basically, to avoid stockout situations uh, when you need the inventory, or to avoid excessive piling of inventory uh, in the warehouse or uh, in the shop floor. So basically, this is a very cool feature in NetSuite uh, where it expands the inventory commitment calculations of allocating inventory to demand orders. Okay, so there's setup requirements. Uh, first and foremost, enabling the supply allocation feature. The other key thing is the setting up of item records for supply allocation, ATP lead time, or the available to promise lead time. And that's typically entered in a number of days for the lead time on the item record. So let's say you have work orders or assemblies which you know have inventory items like purchased items or uh, manufactured inventory items. You define a ATP lead time just to say, can we meet this demand on the sales order uh, if you know some of these inventory items can't meet these uh, times, so the band is you know tomorrow we need to ship it out, but the ATP lead time says 14 days, that means we can't actually make that demand order. So there's an exception, and the supply allocation engine will tell you that. Okay, so there's preferences uh, like the supply allocation setup, demand preferences for allocation timing. When we're talking about timing, we're typically saying when you change something on a demand order line, like a sales order or tra transfer order, when you change the quantities, the allocation also changes. So the original allocation of inventory was for 10, but we change the quantity down to five, then the automatic allocation will happen behind the scenes and change the allocation to five. Uh, similarly, that's on the supply orders also. So there's a preference to perform that. Then there's the supply required by date. So to efficiently match supply with demand, we must know the shipping date. So for example, your shipping date is March 26th, and then demand order lines like sales order lines can have unique supply required by dates per line. So in this case, we might say the supply required by date is March 25th, one day before we ship out the sales order uh, line, we need to have that um, inventory in place uh, as a supply. The supply should be in place by that supply required by date. And this helps to identify the date the order must be shipped to the customer. And we calculate allocation to determine which supply sources should be used to meet demand on specific orders by the required date. So it's typically any demand orders like sales orders, transfer orders, work orders, uh, can we use on-hand inventory or can we use the supply planned orders, work orders, planned orders, or planned purchase orders, or can we use uh, active work orders or purchase orders, okay? Um, and can we get that supply by the supply required by date? So it's a key piece of functionality where each individual demand line can have its own supply required by date. Then we have the supply allocation calculations. This is a cool feature of uh, NetSuite where you can calculate the supply allocation uh, 
automatically in real time. So if you change something on a supply order, then automatically the allocation also changes. Same way on a transfer order or sales order, the demand side, if you change something or you change the dates, the supply allocation will also change. And there's also the manual um, reallocate items page where you can manually change it or you can schedule it. So let's say, for example, you don't want to change the allocations during the day, but it's like daily, weekly, or you want to do the, you know, hourly thing or based on a schedule when no one's on the system, you can schedule this on the order allocation schedule page. Or you could do it on demand using the allocate orders page. OK, so there's different ways of performing these supply allocation calculations and we can choose it based on our business needs. OK, thank you. Then we have the allocation strategies. This is defining rules for allocating inventory. And this is very important uh, for actually getting the right uh, supply in time for the demand order lines. So you can create multiple allocation strategies, then select them on demand order lines. And you should, this has the ability to select an allocation strategy on the demand order line to respond to demand. Uh, but keep in mind, you don't want to stock too much inventory. At the same time, you don't want to, you know, be scarce on inventory when, you know, there's a order out there and there's like a, for example, an e-commerce order where you need to ship out something immediately. You don't want to allocate that to an order which is, you know, two months out or three months out. So you basically want to allocate that immediately using a predefined available allocation strategy. Uh, there's also predefined complete allocation strategy. What that means is you have uh, 10 order quantity of 10 on the sales order line. Uh, you can't allocate partials like a five. In available allocation strategy, you can allocate partials, but in a complete, only if you have the complete quantity of 10, can you allocate them, okay? So I'm going to show you examples of e-commerce orders and wholesale orders, uh, which are for Costco or Sam's Club, uh, based on a supply required by date. In essence, you can create your own allocation strategy for future orders and supply required by date. So if you look at the uh, screen here, we're looking at e-commerce orders like Etsy or Amazon, uh, where you can order like jackets, you know, for a retail price. This is typically retail. Uh, but we need to send out these jackets within two days, okay? So we can't allocate this for some other wholesale order. Let's say they want to buy in bulk 100 jackets or 1,000 jackets. Uh, but now if we allocate everything there, we're not going to have be able to fulfill this. So what we need to do is pick an appropriate allocation strategy, which says available uh, allocation, and it'll allocate it immediately to these e-commerce orders. Now, these... The next example is wholesale orders like Costco, where they have in bulk or Sam's Club. You can see the Quaker Oats or, you know, cereals or, uh, you know, diapers where you have bulk items. Maybe they ordered in March 26th and now we're January 20th. We're 60 days out. So let's say you have um, a supply required by date of 30 days. So we're around of 30 days close to the March 26th. We can allocate this. That way we have enough inventory for our e-commerce side of the business. So that's a key piece of functionality. Uh, we do have inventory options on our allocation strategies to look at inventory on hand, future inventory, on order, in transit. So for example, if it's on a ship or a train, uh, we can use those um, to allocate inventory saying it's in, in transit. Uh, we can define allocation periods current and future inventory, limit inventory allocation before supply required date, or limit inventory allocation after supply required date by future inventory only. So you can define those time frames. And when we get to the demo, I'll show you these key pieces. Allocation methods, allocate as soon as available before supply required by date or as close as possible to the supply required by date. And then we have the quantities just like we saw available or complete quantities. And then another key piece is the allocation type, reserved allocation or firm allocation. What we're talking about is 
reserved uh, allocations like a soft commits and a firm allocations like a hard commit. So any reserved allocation can be reallocated to different orders, but a firm allocation does not allow reallocation by the system to a different order. So firm means it's hard committed to that sales order line or transfer order line, okay? So next we will look at a demo. Let me quickly open up NetSuite here and I'll take an example of a power drill, okay? So the power drill three by eight chuck size is the assembly. This typically has a bill of material and in the bill of material, we have a battery charger assembly, right? And the battery charger assembly itself has a inventory item. So the inventory item is a battery pack, okay? And on the battery pack, what we do have is uh, the definition of an, of an ATP lead time. So for example, under the purchasing and inventory tab, remember when we we're talking about setup requirements, we talked about how we need to do an available to promise lead time setup. So based on location, so for my example, I have San Francisco, and in, in San Francisco, we have 14 days. So what we're saying is, can we fulfill the assembly for uh, by taking this as inventory item, if it's taking 14 days, can we get that assembly in time to meet that demand? So the supply engine will say, we, can, we won't be able to make it if the demand order is tomorrow or day after tomorrow, because this is saying 14 days to available to promise on the inventory item. So these are some key pieces of uh, critical functionality on supply allocations. Next, I'm gonna show you a sales order. And on the sales order, uh, right now, I'm gonna edit this. And what we're going to do is typically change the order line. I'm gonna show you something real quick. Um, this has a sales order detail line where we're gonna change the um, allocation strategy. So for example, let's say we're gonna change it to predefined available allocation strategy, right? And the supply required by date is March 25th, okay? So this is something which the allocation strategy looks at. But in this case, we took available allocation. Notice now how Nothing's been allocated, but I've been ch I changed it, so I need to save it for the change to take place. So I'm going to say save. And when I save it, it should allocate the inventory, uh, the supply to this line item, because what we did was we said whatever's available, allocate it. And if I click on the allocated supply, it pops up a supply window. In that window, it says 10 is allocated. This is what our quantity is in inventory, but 10 got allocated. And 10 is committed, okay? And even though the supply required by date is 325, and our ship date is 326, so this is available one day before that. But notice our time, today is only January 20th. So in essence, we don't want to avoid, we want to avoid a stock out situation. So we don't really want to be committing or allocating inventory to this order because in essence, our supply is only required by March 25th. I can use this for some other order. So what I'm going to do is change my allocation strategy. I edit the sales order. And let me get to my sales detail line. And I'm going to change the allocation strategy to something I just set up. So I'm going to go in and change this to a test plan, right? And I'm going to save this. And when I save it, after that it takes place, and I'll, I'll show you how the line changed. The allocated supply will be removed. Uh, so if we go in, here we could see it's removed because if you notice this test plan is around the supply required by date. And if we open up uh, the allocation strategy for test plan, the order allocation strategy says, look at the on-hand inventory plus look at the future inventory. So we've have the future inventory for all these order types 
And we said, look at 30 days for current and future inventory prior to the supplier required by date and 30 days after the supplier required by date. So what we're saying is if we're in January and the supplier required by date is 325 March 25th, we really don't want to be allocating that to that order because we want to allocate that to an e-commerce order or some other order so that you know we don't avoid a stock out situation for our current uh, customers. Okay. Every customer is important, but we also don't want to avoid stock out situations. Allocate as close as possible to supplier required by date is the allocation method, available quantities, and the as you can see, allocation type is reserved allocation, which really means that you can take this allocation and move it to some other order. Okay. And if I go back to my sales order here, if you notice, if I click on this allocated supply now, it will show that nothing was allocated. There's no alloc uh, allocation showing up there. So this is uh, base functionality of supply allocation. Uh, there's also an allocation alert. One or more auto lines are not scheduled to be fulfilled by the supply required by date. That's because we're still in January and uh, this is March 25th and we changed the allocation strategy. If I change this to the available all allocation strategy, then uh, that exception will go away, okay? So now we'll go back to our demo. And thank you for attending this uh, webinar. And if there's any questions, pl please let uh, GSI know. Thanks again. Bye-bye.